اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان الحمد للہ نحمد و نستعین و نستغفر و نعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا و من سیئیات اعمالنا من یهده اللہ فلا مضل له و من یضلل فلا هادی له و اشہد ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک له و اشہد ان محمد عبده و رسوله اما بعد فان خیر الحدیث کتاب اللہ و خیر الحدی حدی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وعلى آلہ وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار قال الله تبارك وتعالى وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين Respected scholars, religious personalities Our honored guests Dear brothers and sisters I am really honored to be a part of such a great program which in fact is a step towards bringing people of different faiths and religions together on a stage in order to achieve peace and harmony in the society. And this program in itself gives a message to the society that no matter how different we are in our religion, in our religions, in our ideologies, in our thinking, but even with our differences we can gather together to bring peace and harmony to our society, to our country, to the whole humankind. Dear brothers and sisters, this is an age, this is an era of scientific advancements and in this era we find that knowledge of small things and even minute things has become known to humanity and the fields of science and knowledge have increased with leaps and bounds. Astronomy, physics, chemistry, biology, oceanology, anatomy, physiology and a great number of departments of science and knowledge and education. They have increased all these years and man is learning more and more about small things but sadly when it comes to religion and especially Islam it is very unfortunate and a very sad fact that in other fields people learn all the things from first-hand information depending upon their research and accuracy and accurate knowledge. But when it comes to Islam and religion, and especially Islam, people take the information from sources which are not first-hand. They do not take the information, the knowledge about Islam from the sources of Islam. They try to know and learn about Islam through media and people who have wrong opinions about Islam. People who have been defaming, defaming Islam, claiming that Islam teaches man, Muslims, to terrorize humanity, to kill innocent people, man, women, men, women and children, 
to spread mischief in land. This information, this knowledge is not found in the Quran and Sunnah which is the first and the basic source of Islam. This is an interpretation of what people understand and what they think about Islam and Muslims. And this is a very sad fact that about other things we learn from the original sources after a long research and proper understanding. But when it comes to Islam, we totally depend upon opinions rather than the original sources. Islam is not a collection of opinions of people, philosophers, historians. Islam has to be taken, is to be taken from Quran, which is the book of Allah, which Muslim, Muslims believe. And Islam is to be understood in the, in the light of the understanding and the teaching of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which we call hadith, which we call sunnah. So to know whether Islam teaches peace or it teaches terrorism and mischief, we need to go back to the sources and learn it and see it and try to find it in the Quran and Sunnah. And if a person, if he opens the Quran, if he opens the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he will find that the truth is contrary to what people are claiming and trying to Im imply, trying to say about Islam. Unfortunately, media, not the whole of the media, but much of it, media is trying to present Islam and paint it in the wrong colors. And some organizations and some movements like ISIS, Al-Qaeda and the likewise, some such organizations, what they are doing in the land like Syria and other countries, Iraq, what these organizations have done in the name of Islam has added much to this problem. And today many people, many non-Muslims, they are holding an opinion that Islam teaches terrorism. Islam promotes terrorism. And this is not true. Islam denounces terrorism. Islam denounces all such organizations which spread mischief in the land, which kill innocent people, men, women and children alike. Islam is a religion of peace and harmony. To see this from the original sources, from the Quran and Sunnah, we find when you open the book, the Quran, we find that every chapter, every surah of the Quran, it begins with the ayah, with the verse, Bismillah rahman rahim In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. In every surah, before starting in the beginning of the surah, every Muslim, every non-Muslim, every person that reads the Quran, he is reminded that the one, the God that sent this book, Allah who sent, gave this book to humanity, he is not a God of war. He is, he is not a God of injustice. He is not a God of mischief. He is a God of mercy. Allah is the most beneficent, the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهُ وَاحِدٌ لَا إِلَاهَ إِلَّا هُوَ الرَّحْمَانُ الرَّحِيمُ Your God, Allah, your God is one God. There is no one worthy of worship besides Him. But showing the quality of the God we have to worship, we should worship, Allah has left all the qualities, all the attributes and mentioned the two very important qualities La ilaha illahu ar-Rahman ar-Rahim He is the most gracious, He is the most beneficent, the most merciful. 
So the Quran teaches humanity that God of Islam is not the God of war, hatred. God of Islam, which we believe Allah is the God, the true God, He is the God who is the most beneficent, the most merciful. And His mercy is not res restricted to Muslims alone, the believers alone. His mercy is for all humanity, even for animals. That is why we see that rain is sent not only to the Muslim countries, for the, but for all. Food is given to everyone. He is the God who provides everyone, believers and non-believers. Why? Because He is the most merciful. It is His mercy that He is giving all these provisions. He is providing all believers and non-believers alike. He is providing all of them out of his mercy. When it comes to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the Prophet of Islam, Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ O Muhammad, we have sent you to all as a mercy. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have sent you not, but as a mercy, to all nations, all the humanity and every creature. He was a mercy for humanity, for the believers, for the non-believers also. And he was a mercy sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ta ta even for the animals. In his dealings with non-Muslims, in his teachings for the Muslims, we find that it all reflects his mercy and showing mercy to parents, to wife, to children, to neighbors, to relatives, even to the animals. If a person learns Islam from the Quran and Sunnah, he will find that Islam teaches mercy to all, not only to Muslims, but also to the non-Muslims. He was mercy personified. That's why he said in one of the narrations, in one of the ahadith, إِنَّمَا أَنَا رَحْمَةٌ مُهْدَاهِ I have been given as a gift to you. I am a mercy bestowed upon you, given to you as a gift. Allah sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam as a mercy and he was given to humanity as a gift. In his teachings, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ar-Rahimuna yarhamuhum ar-Rahman Irhamu man fil ard Yarhamukum man fil sama This is a narration, a hadith mentioned by Imam Abu Dawud, Imam Ahmad and many other scholars of hadith. He said, Ar-Rahimuna yarhamuhum ar-Rahman The merciful ones Ar-Rahimun, people who show mercy to people and to creatures, to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Rahimun, people who have the quality of showing mercy to others. Yarhamuhum ar-Rahman, the most merciful Allah will show mercy to them. Which means to receive mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one must have the quality of showing mercy to people, to others. Irhamu man fil ard, yarhamukum man fil sama. Show mercy to others. In irhamu man fil ard, show mercy to those who are in the land on earth. Yarhamukum man fil sama. He, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, who is above the heavens, He will show mercy to you. This hadith shows. This saying of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam shows. That to receive mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a believer, a Muslim should show mercy to people, to others. If you want mercy from Allah, give mercy to others. So Islam is the religion of mercy and peace. It is not a religion of injustice, mischief and terrorism. Islam and all the organizations of Muslims, no matter how different they are, they have all together 
unanimously they have refuted and denounced all these organizations that provoke and they, they preach hatred and they preach terrorism like Al-Qaeda and ISIS in fact they have gathered all the fatwa they have given all we have seen that book they have given fatwas against this organization which is a problem not only to, to the humanity non-Muslims it is a problem for Muslims and Islam because because of what they are committing the crimes and heinous things they have they have committed in the land in such countries like Iraq and Syria because of their, their activities because of their sins Islam has been defamed they are defaming Islam Islam does not support such activities Islam is a religion of peace and, him, and, and harmony showing mercy in the land is not restricted to Muslims alone Islam teaches that we should not be merciful to our own but to all in one of the narrations Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ By Allah, by whom? By Him in whose hands in whose hand is my life وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ And He says لَا يَضَعُ اللَّهُ رَحْمَتَهُ إِلَّا عَلَى رَحِيمٌ Allah will not bestow His mercy upon anyone but one who is merciful Allah gives Allah sends His mercy upon people who are merciful to others. The companions around him, they said, O Prophet of Allah, Ya Rasulullah, Kulluna Yarham. Every one of us, in one or the other way, to one or the other, shows mercy. A mother shows mercy to her children, a man shows mercy to people around him, his relatives son, daughters, wife, parents people are merciful to, to their own people people around them the Prophet ﷺ said no لَيْسَ بِرَحْمَةِ أَحَدِكُمْ عَلَى صَاحِبِهِ لَيْسَ بِرَحْمَتِكُمْ صَاحِبَهُ no it is not that you should show mercy to your own people يُرْحَمُ النَّاسُ كَافَةً Mercy should be shown to people, the whole humanity. يُرْحَمُ النَّاسُ كَافَةً A person should be merciful to all people, irrespective of religion, irrespective of relations, irrespective of land. Not that I will be merciful to my family, to my people of my country, to my people of my religion. But he said, يُرْحَمُ النَّاسُ كَافَةً The true person, the true mercy shown to people is that a person should show mercy to all humanity. Now see, this is the teaching of Islam. How can a religion which is promoting and teaching that a Muslim should be merciful to all humanity, how can such a religion be teaching terrorism and mischief and killing of innocents, men, women, children, destroying places of worship, destroying houses, destroying lives of people. How can this religion teach such things? Most of the people, most of the, 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 the organizations which are terrorist organizations, their, their agenda is not religious. The agenda is political. If you, if you study all these organizations, you will see that the basic agenda is political, but it is presented in the garb of religion to fool people. Because if you want to fool people of a particular religion and you want to make them their, your followers, the most sacred thing in their, their, their sight is religion. And whatever agenda 
they are preaching they will have to preach that in the in the light of religion but that agenda is not religious that agenda is political so people who have studied all these organizations they have come to this con conclusion that all such organizations which are terrorist organizations like daesh which is called daesh in the arab world and it is called is is in the the english terminology these organizations like is is and al qaeda and other outfits of such sort they are political organizations but they want people to follow them that's why they want to present it to muslim people in the light of quran and distorting the understanding of the quran and sunnah this is the distortion of the true teachings see taking some every religion and every country in one of the other way in one of the, of the situations they have to have use power they had in their history in their teachings war if you find any scripture of any religion you will find war in that hinduism christianity islam there are teachings regarding war all the countries they have their military and in their history they have wars but just having some wars in the teachings or in the history does not make a religion or a country terrorist because we know that to preserve peace to maintain peace sometimes it is necessary it becomes the last resort to have war and if you see the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we find that he was the person in al hudaybiya he had a pact a deal of no war with the non muslims in al hudaybiya there is it's a place prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to makka and people who did not believe in his message who were the op oppressors people who have driven him and his companions out of makka and waged wars against him prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam tried to maintain peace and he dealt with them and he had a pact with them that we will not have war for 10 years and even if a person they said if a person from you comes to us we will not return him if a muslim comes to us and he leaves islam we will not return him but if a person a, a disbeliever comes to you you will have to return him back to us he said okay he agreed with them why to stop the continuous series of wars he was having with the non believers if islam was a religion of war prophet sallallahu prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam would never have stopped war but he had that peace treaty in history we find that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam sat with them and made a treaty with them that we will not have war so this is islam this is the history of islam this is the history of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we find in islam in the quran and sunnah that some of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to the prophet and he, they said they, they asked one sahabi says abu huraira radiyallahu anhu says qila ya rasulullah ud'u ala al mushrikeen invoke curse upon the non believers those who are worshiping gods other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invoke a curse pray to allah against them pray to allah that allah destroys them allah sends curse upon them ud'u ala al mushrikeen the companions came to the prophet and asked him to ask allah to destroy the non muslims because in, in in the background of this is that these were the people the the people of the makka the people the disbelievers in islam they had driven muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the companions out of their homes they forced them to leave makka to leave all the property behind these were the people who were persecuted but when they came to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
He said, Inni lam lam ubat laana, inna ma wa inna ma buit to rahma. He said, I am not sent to humanity as a person who invokes curse upon people. I am not here to curse people. Inni lam ubat laana, wa inna ma buit to rahma. But I am sent to humanity as a mercy. I am not sent as a person who invokes curse upon people. I am sent to people as a mercy. So this is the teaching. People are coming to him and asking him to call Allah against them. But he said, no. I am not sent as a person who curses. I am sent to humanity as a mercy. So it is our duty, especially of even Muslims and non-Muslims, if we want to have an opinion, hold an opinion about Islam, it is our duty that we must learn and study and find out facts and not, not some opinions about Islam. We should find out what Islam is from the original sources from the Quran, the book of Allah, which is sent to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi which he presented to humanity as a book of God, book of Allah. We should learn Islam from the Quran. And we should know, try to find out what Islam teaches from the teaching of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa who brought Islam to humanity. So I am very thankful to Jamit Ahl Hadith of Tumkur to, who organized such a great program and tried to gather people of different faiths on this stage and in order to bring peace to our community and society and may Allah accept this effort and accept all the people who have gathered here and give us guidance and give us mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.